Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking uh, podcast. Part of the mixed messaging Americans are receiving. And so what CDC has done is that we've really looked at the essential workforce and how to maintain that workforce, particularly at this time as we begin to get ready to reopen and have confidence in bringing our workforces back to work. And so we've put out a a new guidance for essential health care workers who've been exposed to the coronavirus. These are individuals that have um, been within six feet of a confirmed case or a suspected uh, case, and so that they can, under uh, certain circumstances, they can go back to work. If they're asymptomatic, as the vice president said, Holy crap. Um, they could go back to work if they do f- uh, s- several things, as we say here. Uh, take their temperature before they go to work. Oh my God! Wear a face mask oh my God. at all times, and practice social distancing when they're at work. What we'd ask them not to do where they're at work is we want them to stay at home if if they're sick. We want them not to share objects that would be touching their face, and we would like them not to congregate in break rooms, lunch rooms, and crowded places. Holy crap! So the um, director of the Centers for Disease Control, Mr. Redfield, Dr. Redfield, is advising that if you've been exposed to COVID, if you've been within six feet of somebody that has COVID, that's tested positive for COVID, but you don't have symptoms, go ahead and go back to work. Just wear a mask and take your temperature and don't congregate in the break room. How about a test, Dr. Redfield, before you release these asymptomatic patients who are silent spreaders? Again, I could be one. I could be one. This is why I keep telling Brett, don't come near me. Don't come near me. And it's not because I don't love him. It's because I do love him. And we don't have tests. You have to be sick in order to qualify for a test. So people who don't have symptoms can't get a test. And yet, we can be spreaders, and they are standing at the White House press briefing room night after night telling people, okay, so now you know you've come in contact with somebody with COVID. It's okay. Go back to work. Just don't uh, hang around the break room. Are you freaking kidding me? Fauci, here's the other side of the... Fauci's like, no, stay home, stay home. So Dr. Fauci, let's talk about that redoubling of our efforts because what a lot of Americans are thinking right now is, okay, so I've made it to April, I'm gonna go through the spring. What about the summer? Virtually everybody in this country has some kind of thing planned for this summer. Can they expect to go forward with those plans or will we still be in some sort of a shelter in place or lockdown condition? You know, it looks like things are going to be improving. If you look at the curves that we talk about, we often talk about flattening the curve and then getting around the corner and coming down. If, in fact, we see that, and it'll be differential in different parts of the country. I mean, New York City, the terrible ordeal that they've gone through is very different from some of the places in the middle of the country or in the mountain regions. So when you say get back to normal, it's not going to be a a light switch that you turn on and off. It's going to be differential and gradual depending upon where you are and where the burden of infection is. But the bottom line of it all is that we see looking forward it is very likely that we will progress towards the steps towards normalization as we get to the end of this 30 days. And I think that's going to be a good time to look and see how quickly can we make that move to try and normalize. But hopefully, and hopefully, by the time we get to the summer, we will have taken many steps in that direction. Yeah, and one of those steps is testing. And that's what everybody keeps, uh, you know, uh, telling you. Who cares about us? That's what everyone who cares about us is saying is needed to get us back to something called normal. Except for the people, the sycophants around Donald Trump. And I mean, they are everywhere. They are just everywhere. I I, I, I just, it's, it's, it's disgusting. Hannity, he hates, he hates Andrew Cuomo. I hate him. 
I hate him. I want us to go back to work. Just go back to work. I, 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 don't, I don't know what, what is making these. I mean, I guess it's money. I mean, you know, you pay somebody $25 million to be a propagandist. They're going to propagandize. You know, grifters going to grift. Of New York governor, the ever incompetent, all talk, no action, Andrew Cuomo, just promising New York would not go back to normal anytime soon. Well, there's an ambitious plan. So does he think a, a months long shutdown for America's biggest city is going to be a good thing? Does he not have any more creative thinking than that? Because that would forever alter the economy and the country. And why does nobody in the media mob ever held that, hold that guy accountable? Ever. We lost 779 New Yorkers last night. 779 people literally died overnight. And this man is sitting literally on 6th Avenue in Manhattan telling everybody to go back out, come out, come out, whatever you are. Tucker Carlson is uh, reporting this is over. This is over. Now, once again, we ought to celebrate all of this. Fewer hospitalizations huh. are a godsend for this country. And as awful as this epidemic has been and will be, at least so far, it hasn't been the disaster that we feared. Our healthcare system hasn't collapsed. That was the key concern. Except in a handful of places, really, it hasn't come very close. Patients are not dying alone in the hallways of emergency rooms with physicians too overwhelmed to treat them. Why? That was the concern. It happens in other countries. It's not happening here. It Thank is. Thank God for that. All of this means that the short-term crisis, the ones that we worried about so fervently, in which pressure on hospitals grew so exponentially, day by day, with no end in sight, that short-term crisis may have passed. We'll see, but it looks like it may have. What is wrong with these people? All right, um, this, this is an article in New York Magazine. Uh, it is a, written by Dr. Adam, Adam Brenner. He runs the ICU at Mount Sinai in Brooklyn. Um, he said maybe two or three patients died upstairs in our second ICU, but a lot of the deaths are of the patients that don't make it to ICU who are sitting on the regular floors and unfortunately can't come here because there are no beds. He is saying people are dying in the hallway. New York has announced that if you die and you're in the refrigerated truck, like 779 new corpses are in the truck this morning, just from last night, and no one claims you, they will bury you in Potter's Field. That used to be a threat from my parents, okay? That only the poorest and the most unlikable people would die alone and be buried in Potter's Field. And now New York is saying they need to put these bodies somewhere. And if you don't claim somebody's body and you don't fork over the cash to have a, a mortuary, which is, they're overwhelmed too. Come and bury your, your, your loved one or come and bury your friend. They will bury them for you in Potter's Field, which are unmarked graves. He said, in ICU, you have specialized intensive care, specialized nurses and technicians that know how to manage the special medications. Ventilator management can be very complicated, and the staff on the ICU floor, uh, the staff on the non-ICU floor are not as used to dealing with that and taking care of patients with those requirements. Uh, then he goes on to say, there is no other disease in our lifetime where you see 170, 180 patients in the hospital with the same disease. We still don't have the staffing or the space for everyone. We have a 12-bed ICU. We opened up a second 12-bed ICU, and yet we still have 15 to 20 patients in the hospital that we need to find a place for. It's overwhelming because this just goes on and on and on. We realize we're not going to get to all these patients in the right way. And then there are the new patients coming in that we have to evaluate. And even if people die, the list does not get shorter. It's an ongoing process and it makes us feel horrible. It makes us feel helpless. People are waiting much longer for an ICU bed. We're, st we're still trying to get them into ICUs as soon as possible. And we've also been transferring patients to other hospitals in the Sinai system. The virus is horrible.
It is a horrifying disease. It is not just a disease of the lungs that we're seeing. It is also a disease of the kidney. We're seeing around 80% of critically ill patients experiencing kidney failure. We're finding that to be a very poor prognostic indicator. Upwards of 80 to 90% of patients with kidney failure have died. We don't have enough dialysis machines to take care of these patients. And the disease of the lung is like nothing you've ever seen before. There are so many theories about what this is, but nobody really knows. F you, Tucker. Go to RandyRhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.